the uh, on the day and uh, perhaps uh, walk us through the uh, the process, uh, uh, the free agency process, and how you came to sign such a, a great trio of players. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, this is a great day for Boston sports fans. I have been patiently awaiting the opportunity to announce that um, Aaron Frankel and Hillary Knight and Megan Keller will be the first three signings in PWHL Boston history. Um, so, I, you know, I couldn't have asked for better three people and better three players to, to build this roster around. Um, heading into to free agency, I, you know, I had a wish list and I wrote three names on a piece of paper and they were Aaron, Hillary, and Megan. Um, I knew that I wanted a goaltender who um, was going to compete who can win and, you know, she, Aaron's won in every uh, level that she's played at. She's a Patty Kazmaier or winner, sorry, excuse me, um, which is a really hard award to win as a goalie, um, you know, national goalie of the year. She's just the ultimate competitor. And that's something that when I, you know, did my homework and talked to coaches, that was a phrase that came up time and time again. Um, so, you know, I knew that was somebody that I didn't want to wait for the draft. I, I wanted to make sure that I locked her in. Um, as early as possible and you know I, I building from the goal line out I knew I wanted a defender who is going to be hard to play against who's going to be physical um, but who could also contribute on offense who could run a power play um, so you know that's Megan Keller had an outstanding um, college career broke a ton of records during a Boston College dynasty and you know ever since has um, shown what she can do in the U.S. national team and, and, and why she's one of those top defenders and a top defender in, in the world. Um, and then, you know, lastly, up, up front, last but not least, I, I wanted somebody who could put the puck in the net and there's no one better than Hillary Knight. Um, she has proven time and time again throughout her career that she really is the best goal scorer. Um, and, you know, we don't have the time to talk about all of her accolades and, and what she's been able to accomplish, but um, there, there isn't anyone who's done more for women's hockey than she has. And, you know, so I'm I'm just proud and honored to to have these three players um, on my roster. Thanks, Danielle. All three players were members of Canada's or not Canada's, pardon me, the U.S. national women's team that won gold at the uh, World Championship in April. And as uh, Danielle mentioned, representing all three players, they've all or all three positions, they've all got ties to the Boston area, including goaltender Aaron Frankel with a star-studded career at Northeastern. Uh, Aaron, maybe just. Take us through the process for you and, and your excitement to stay in Boston to pursue your pro career. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, this is obviously a super exciting day for me. And when we had the announcement of the cities come out, I obviously had my eyes set on Boston. And it's a place that has become so special to me for so many reasons. Um, people I've met and my college career here. So I was really hoping that I could land a, a spot on this team um, and to do so alongside Megan um, and Hillary is also a dream come true. You know, they are two incredible hockey players and role models to me. So I'm just very excited to be here and grateful for the opportunity. Thanks, Aaron. Um, Megan, uh, turn to you and, and for your your. Remarks, uh, as I said, familiar with the Boston area with your time at uh, Boston College as, as uh, general manager Danielle Marmer suggested. Um, your thoughts on staying in the area and, and competing alongside Aaron and Hillary? Yeah, I mean, Aaron, Aaron's already hit it home there. Um, Boston quickly became my home when, when I got the chance to come out and attend Boston College. And I've stuck around every since, uh, ever since just because I love this city so much. And it's truly become a place that, that I call my home. So I couldn't be more happy and fortunate to be able to play for the Boston franchise and especially alongside teammates, Hillary and Aaron, you couldn't have picked two better people, um, friends and teammates to be able to go on this journey with, with. So I'm super excited for the opportunity. Thanks, Megan. And Hillary Knight, a uh, longstanding member of Team USA, the highest scorer and World Women's Championship history uh, gold medalist uh, Hillary back in Boston to resume your pro career. Uh, your thoughts on signing free agency and getting started with the PWHL? 
Yeah, I, obviously it's uh, not missed on us. That this is a historic year in many ways. Um, obviously having a, a professional league and somewhere sustainable to play is just so exciting. Um, but to to double down and return to Boston um, and build a, a substantial legacy here with these two individuals, I can't think of anybody better to do that with and no better city to do it in. So we're all really excited to, to have professional hockey back in Boston uh, with the PWHL and cannot wait to get started and, and see our fans and just get involved with the community and um it's, it's going to be a historic year so all all excitement from here great thanks hillary we'll now take questions folks a uh, reminder for those that are new to these availabilities if you do have a question please raise your digital hand on the zoom console i'll call on you individually and ask you to unmute and proceed with your question please uh, introduce yourself and and the uh, media outlet that you are representing uh, we'll take as many questions as uh, time will allow. Uh, let's start with uh, uh, Sam Fryman, please. Hi, Sam Fryman, Fryman Hockey Writings. Uh, Paul, thanks for getting this together. And first and foremost to uh, Danielle, congratulations on the new position. Uh, it's so great to see uh, professional women's hockey have this latest uh, iteration in Boston. And my first question would be um, to the players talking about just uh, the fan atmosphere in the city of Boston, there was talk that uh, Boston may not be one of the cities considered at the earliest point, and there was a lot of great fan rallying behind uh, the hockey history that they have in that city. And so I'm just wondering from the perspective of all of you, how do you expect that fan at atmosphere to be ramped up even more once the season actually gets started here in January? Sam, that just to clarify, that question was for all of the players. Yes, whichever one of you wants to answer first. I'm sorry. Yeah, I I, I think the uh, the excitement, the the buzz around hockey, uh, just in the state of Massachusetts in the New England area, is just ecstatic. Um, so, in my mind, I never thought that Boston would never have a a, a location um, in this in this new iteration of professional hockey. But, you know, I can't think of a better location to to have such a competitive team, and I think that's it's not lost on us uh, that it's called title town for a reason. And there's a, there's a big responsibility to step up and, and step into this spotlight and, um, you know, put on a great performance for our fans because we do have the best fans uh, in the United States. And that's something that, you know, I personally am looking forward to playing in front of and, and having that fan base and continuing to grow that as we move forward. Karen or Megan, do you want to elaborate? I can add on to that a little bit. Um, I mean, yeah, as Phil said, it's no secret that Boston is one of the greatest sports cities in the world. So super passionate, passionate fan. So I'm really excited to be able to have the opportunity to play in front of them and uh, create a winning culture um, that this city has already established. Thanks, Sam. Take our next question from Elias, please. Uh, hey, guys, congratulations. Elias Lorati from here in Montreal. Um, the Habs Bruins rivalry has always been one of the biggest rivalries in the NHL. How excited are you to maybe build that rivalry in the uh, PWHL for all if y'all guys can touch on that? I would appreciate it. Um well, I, oh Hillary, you got it. Okay. I was I was just gonna say, just going back to um sort of my my first like semi-pro or professional uh time in Boston, you know, we got into some heated battles with that rivalry and it's it's very much ingrained uh I think between the two cities and that's what that's makes what it fun. Is. You're going to be, bring out the best competition of one another. Um, you know, it, I'm excited for our rosters to stack up and see where everyone sort of lines up when the season starts and to really get cracking with with all of that competition because it's definitely, uh, you, you definitely feel it, whether you're originally from the Boston area or not. Um, it's Boston versus Montreal. And we know that that rivalry is significant. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. I was just going to say I definitely felt um, last year with the PWHPA season, just how rivalries kind of built up as the season went along and things got pretty competitive um, come playoffs. So I'm excited to get things started again. I think we're going to have a little continuation of um, the competitiveness that we ended with last year. And um, yeah. Thanks, Elias. We'll take our next question from Oliver, please. Oh, sorry, it wasn't on mute. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, Oliver Anton from uh, PrideDieHards.com. Uh, uh, checking in, and uh, once again, uh, Danielle, congrats on signing uh, these three great players uh, to the franchise that we all get to call home. Uh, Hillary, Megan, and Aaron, welcome back to Boston in all of your respective regards. Uh, it's 
great to have you with us and giving us something to really be uh, excited about. Uh, I just have two really quick questions for y'all. Uh, to start off, community involvement was massive uh, in pairing with both the Bruins and the Pride and sort of how they went out into the community after the fact. And with the return of professional hockey to uh, Boston, professional women's hockey to Boston, uh, what are we looking like uh, for community engagement from players uh, that now are able to put Olympic gold medalist and women's world uh, champion to their uh, name and bring those out to the community? Uh, and one just for Hillary, uh, you've won a Clarkson Cup and an Isabel Cup, and now we'll have a third iteration of the Cup. What does that mean to you and your legacy to be able to put a third Cup to your name on top of an already massive list of accolades? Thank you all. You can jump on the uh, the community involvement piece. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you make a great point. I think coming from the Bruins organization, I got to see firsthand what those players mean to the city and, um, you know, the pride that they took in in the city of Boston. And that's an expectation for me with, with our, our players. And um, these are three players and, and people who are great people um, who've been, you know, Hillary and Megan, especially have been in the game a long time, Aaron, I know you're a little bit younger, but um, this, this city means a lot to, to these three and um, whatever we can do to, to give back to the community, to, to be, you know, active members of the community is something that we're definitely going to, um, we're going to make a priority this year. Yeah, and, and and going back to sort of opening comments, I think it's uh, equally important our our off ice legacy as our on ice legacy. So you know, obviously championships are huge and instrumental into to the growth in that area, and also just um, just being a part of uh, historic Boston sports moments. And um, if there's another championship on the line, you know, I want to win it. And I think everyone is <laughs> is in the the same boat on this call, whether it's Megan or Aaron or, or you know wh whomever we draft and put the pieces together with this roster. But um, you know, the community is super important to us and continuing to grow the game and um, you know give back in ways because it uh, it takes a a whole village to get one successful individual to play professionally or to play at the high level. And so we understand that the grassroots development is super critical to to anyone's success when you get here. Um, and so it's it's important. It's going to be important for us to be involved in the community but um to address sort of the titles i mean we want to win i think that's the first thing one of the first texts i got it's like now that you've signed in boston you know you're gonna have to win a championship and it's like yeah we got our work cut out for us uh there's going to be a lot of hurdles along the way but um you know i'm looking forward to to navigating those waters and building something substantial here with both aaron and megan and um again couldn't think of better people to do that with and put ourselves in a be the best possible position to win Amazing. Thank you so much. You know, we expect titles here. So thank you all very, very much for your time. Thanks, Oliver. Take the next question from Emma, please. Hi, guys. This is uh, Emma Healy with the Boston Globe. Uh, thanks so much for your time today. Danielle, this is a question for you. So you you mentioned in your opening comments that these three were the three that you had your eyes set on from the very beginning. And I imagine that you are not the only person who had that in mind, knowing these players. Um, so can you take me behind the negotiations that went into happen or to making this deal happen? How did you end up with with this roster um, of players in free agency? Yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned um, the players that I was looking for, what I wanted to bring uh, to the beginning of building this roster. And these three embodied that um, both, you know, all positionally, but also as people. Um, and, you know, these three are winners. They've proven that they can win at every level. That They've been winners um, and, and have been able to accomplish a lot in their careers. And um, that is is was super important in, in the foundation that I wanted to build in this team. Um, the, you know, Friday when free agency opened, uh, it was crazy and, and in the best way. Um, you know, the excitement for women's hockey, the fact that you know, everybody has agents, like it just shows where this sport has grown to what we're, you know, what we're trying to accomplish here, like, the goal is attainable, like this is going to be a sustainable league and having these conversations with players and, and agents on Friday um, was just a testament to that how committed they are to making this happen. Um, you know, I had great conversations with with agents with players. Um, I, you know, it, it all happened quicker than I think maybe we were expecting. Um, I don't know if I, if I thought that we'd, you know, sort of come to an agreement all in one day, but um, I was super excited because like I said, you know, I wrote three names down on a piece of paper and they're the three names that are three people who are sitting in front of you today. Um, so I just, I couldn't be more honored to have them join our group. 
Can I can I clarify something? So you said sure. you, you got you got these deals all done in one day. Is that you had all three of them, you know, basically signed on Friday? Is that the case? Um not technically signed, but the it sounded like that was the way that it was gonna go and that they had they had agreed and wanted to be in Boston on Friday. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And Sema, uh Zoe, you can go ahead with your question, please. Hi, this is Zoe from the Victory Press. Um, this question is for Hillary. Um, I wanted to know if you could just reflect on what's different about this opportunity. Um, like we've said, this is going to be your third team in Boston. Um, I know you've been trying to advocate for better resources for your teammates for many years, and then you got to be a part of this group that was negotiating the collective bargaining agreement. Um, is this what you've been dreaming for for about the last 10 years? Uh, definitely <laughs> what we've been uh, all working towards the, the last uh, 10 plus years, even even before then. I think what's different now is, um, you know, to my knowledge, having a, a CBA done before we even have a puck drop and, 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 you know, a season. I mean, I think that's instrumental to protecting the players and, and, and also setting up a structure of success to to make sure that this thing is sustainable and um, you know, we're, we're navigating the future in an appropriate way that, that makes sense from, from a business standpoint, but also from a, a player experience standpoint as well. And so I couldn't be more, um, excited, uh, from the investor group that's involved and the pieces that we have in place and the type of experience that, uh, all of us athletes have, uh, long earned <laughs> and now we're going to experience. And so that's, what's just exciting about this. And you can get down into the weeds about, you know, this versus that, but this is completely different than anything we've ever had before. And I think that's, what's so exciting. And, um, you know, many years we've been scratching the surface of what could be, and now we're here and it's going to be a magical journey for everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks, uh, Carissa, you can proceed with your question, please. Hey, thanks, Paul and Ashley. Um, just a uh, congratulations to all of you, first of all, um, huge day and, and, and a big accomplishment. Um, just wanted to just wondering if you could uh, kind of take people inside what that free agency process was like, like what surprised you the most about it? Um, and what did you, you know, that moment when you officially, you know, signed the contract, what, what did that feel like? Sorry, Chris, you're looking for all the players to yeah, sorry that. about that. Whoever would like to answer that. Well, how about we go around the circle? Let's go Aaron, Megan, and then Hillary, please. Okay. I think similarly to how Danielle um, explained things earlier, it happened a lot quicker than I thought it was going to. I was obviously extremely excited when my agent told me that Boston was interested, um, but I didn't know how quickly I was going to um, kind of lean towards signing with them. And obviously things took a little bit longer to get squared away contract wise, but I had every intention in signing with Boston when um, the offer was proposed to me. So I think just the excitement and also the nerves of getting everything done happened pretty quickly. But I think uh, that was kind of a weight off our shoulders finally um, when we were able to sign that piece of paper and know that Boston was going to be our home. I can, I can agree with that. Uh, definitely more stressful than I was anticipating. I think all of us were texting each other like, oh, this is pretty stressful, but um, at the same time, also trying to enjoy the process. It's something that we've never gotten to do before. And so to be a part of it was pretty special. And as Aaron said, once Boston was interested, it was, it was kind of game over for me. This is, this is the place that I wanted to play and uh, couldn't be more excited to, to be able to have the opportunity. Yeah, I share the same sentiment of excitement. Um, knowing Boston was, was in the mix, and I think I called Meg. <laughs> I was like, "Are we doing this? Is she? Are you doing this? Like, what's going on? Because I don't want to do this without you guys." So, um, yeah, it's just it's such an honor to to um, be considered for for Boston for many reasons. Um, and so I think uh, this it's just you got to jump at an offer like that. It's there's, there's so many great things um, when you write them all down and weigh out the pros and cons, there's, there's more pros than cons. And it's just extremely exciting to be back in front of a fan base that's diehard about hockey and, and is going to be so, um, you know, encouraging of, of having a team here and um, you know, can't wait to get on the ice. I mean, now it's like, hurry up and wait. So. That's great. And, and just a quick question for Danielle about the uh, preparation for the draft. I imagine that's your, your big focus now. Um, what does that look like? I mean, do you have some, some staff that you're working with yet at this point? Um, are you consulting these three players you just signed, um, you know, to get 
get their take on some of the players who might be available. Uh, just take us inside that process, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, I, I am um, starting to build out a bit of a staff that's definitely been helpful in um, in in figuring out like what what do we want this to look like? What are we looking for? Um, and what pieces do we need out of this draft? Um, definitely planning to consult with these three as they know these players and the teammates that they've had um, better than I could ever know them. So they're you know, I'll, I'll take a, you know, any any help and, and any resources that I can. Um, I'm happy to use uh, their, you know, college coaches. Um, USA, Canada hockey coaches that I've been reaching out to that I've been in contact with um, just to get to know these players better, what their skill sets are, uh, what their character is like, and, and how they can help us to win a championship. That's great. Thanks so much, all of you. Thanks, Krista. Uh, Alex, you can go ahead with your question, please. Hi, all. Alex Mazzi with The Messenger. Um, Aaron, I'll direct this to you. I think of all of the signees so far, you are the youngest by quite a bit. Um, and I was curious if you could first speak to what your post-grad experience has been like so far. I know obviously you were in the PWHPA and, and spent time with the US team, uh, but just kind of what that post-college transition looked like for you. And then um, also if you've heard anything from college teammates or even opponents that are now preparing to maybe enter this league, um, and how you think the league could change things going forward. Yeah, I think um, going off the second part of that question, I think there's so much excitement right now um, within the college players just looking at this league taking off and it's only going to build um, year after year. So I think giving them something to look forward to and knowing that the foundation is down is really exciting. My freshman, sophomore year at Northeastern, there wasn't obviously a league like this in the works yet. And I knew there was a ton going on behind the scenes as the PWHPA took off. And um, I had the opportunity to play in it last year. And I, I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, the level of play was amazing and it was competitive and we got to experience a lot of different hockey cities. But I think what was lacking for me personally was just a very stable training environment. So that's the thing that I would say is the most exciting is um, having a team here who I know is gonna um, also support me on and off the ice and having a great staff and just kind of a reliable training environment that um, last year was a little bit difficult to string together skates every week. And um, we definitely made do and it was very helpful having Megan um, and other local players around, but it wasn't like full team practices. So I think the structure that that has been um, being built is one that's going to be amazing this year and is exciting for the younger players who are in college to look forward to when they are able to graduate. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Uh, Karen, you can go ahead with a question, please. Hey guys, congratulations to you all. Uh, my question is for Hillary. I'm just wondering, you know, after years of kind of uh, putting up a united front and fighting for the collective good with the CBA um, um, negotiations and all that, how weird did it feel to actually kind of think of yourself first in this first contract negotiations? But at the same time, balancing that with the fact that there's no maximum salary in the league, but there is the average salary requirement, which means that, you know, if if a team goes too high with its free agency, it means that the other players will have to take less. How do you reconcile that? Yeah, well, I, I think, um, you know, this is just uh, this first CBA um, and negotiations is, is a great starting point. Um, it gets us you know, into different markets and, and allows us to build different fan, fan bases and teams and, and, and legacies in different respects. Um, but it, it, it's an awesome starting point. And in any negotiation, the first thing that people will tell you that if both sides are unhappy, um, it, it's a good negotiation. And so, you know, there are definitely things that we would love to, to have more of. And, you know, for example, like comp compensation piece, but at the same time, this is a substantial step in, in the right direction. And um, we are where we are right now. Um, and so it all, it all has to make sense, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking forward to the future. I think, you know, if you, you could sort of nitpick on different things and go through the CBA and say, well, why didn't you guys do this? Or why didn't you get that? But um, there's, there's so many more benefits and good that, that outweigh any of that. And so I think everyone collectively, um, you know, whether you're playing a smaller role or a larger role is um, all, we're all rowing in, in the right direction. And that at the end of the day is going to get 
women's professional hockey to where it needs to be and for a young girl to be able to sign up and pursue this as her career path um, and you know earn that livable wage that we're, we're taking a stab at right now and, and partially receiving so um, you know it's just all good things are going to come um, and it takes time and I'm excited to be you know a, another small piece in this puzzle as all these other players are and um, with the excitement of, of having a team in Boston it's just uh, you know, how can we, how can we get started at this point? But uh, really, really excited from the the investment that this investor group's made, the business model that they've created and the player experience that we are all going to to finally have. And that's something I've never experienced. My first uh, professional uh, or semi-pro locker uh, uh, setup was two um, milk crates uh, stacked on each other and uh, in the <laughs> community rank bathroom. So uh, we've come a long way. And so when you put everything into perspective, this is outstandingly better than anything that's ever existed before. And I'm really excited to embark on this new journey together. All right, cheers. Um, just one follow up for all three players, actually. Uh, now that you're going to be playing against some of your national team, uh, national team teammates, who are you most dreading playing against? All of them. Abby Rock. <laughs> I always go at it with Abby, so I'm actually very, very looking forward to it, and I, I know she is as well, but we always have fun competing against each other. You know that bets are off when we're on different teams. Meg, you know that means I'm going to have to have your back going in every file now. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I would say Nicole Hensley. She's impossible to score on, so I think that'll be a good goalie battle, and it's always fun to play against her. She's one of my good friends, but uh, she's she's hard to beat. All right. Thank you very much, you guys, and best of luck on the new season. Thanks, Karen. Let's take a follow-up from Sam. Hi, just one follow-up question I had for Danielle. Uh, given how well-known these three women in front of you are in the world of hockey and given their reach globally to both Team USA, Team Canada, everyone in the hockey world, how aggressively have they already been acting, if at all, as sort of co-GMs in telling you about uh, players they've played against, played with, and trying to possibly lure them to Boston to create the best team possible? Uh, they, they actually haven't uh, made any suggestions to this point. Um, I'm the one that's going to have to reach out to them and pick their brain because uh, they, they haven't given me any info yet this far, but uh, I know that they will. Um, I think they're just being respectful of, you know, I'm, I'm working through putting putting players into buckets, figuring out what we need and, and what I think is best going to help complement these players. Um, but that is definitely the next step for me is um, picking their brains and, and seeing, you know, who, who are the players that, that you best like to, to play with who's been the hardest to play against um you know who can complement what we're trying to to create here absolutely thank you all very much and best of luck come january thank you sam at this time i see no further hands but i will allow another moment if somebody has a new question or a follow-up or if anyone uh, would prefer to type their question into the chat uh, happy to accept it that way and can ask the group before we close Follow up from uh, Emma. Go ahead, please. Hey guys, just sort of going off uh, one of those questions a few questions ago, but um, uh, I know you guys have been talking, the three of you, sort of uh, you know debriefing, going over this process. But have you talked to anyone who's been signed to another franchise yet? Is there any trash talk happening yet? I think. I mean, yeah, there's always like different comments and stuff, but I think everyone's just right now super supportive. I think this is a, a huge um, uh, transformative time for many people's lifestyles as well. And just being sort of cognizant of that. Some people have to to uproot and move and, and start new and who have been rooted somewhere for, for a handful of years. Some people are coming fresh out of college. Obviously the draft is a huge wrinkle on where people are going to end up. And I think there's just a lot of excitement, obviously free agency period. Um, I felt like a lot of us were in a, a blender. Um, but yeah, I mean, Boston's a hot ticket. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of people wanted to be there at the same time. And it was a super competitive, um, you know, call to receive. And, um, you know, I'm sure there's going to be more trash talking as the season progresses. And we sort of get dug, dug in into our uh, respective cities. And uh, that's what I'm so excited. You're going to see the best hockey consistently night in, night out 
Um, and we've never had a consistent place uh, to watch the greatest in the world. So um, it's going to be phenomenal. Further, Emma, or any other players to? Nope. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Okay. And we'll take a uh, final one from Elias, please. Uh, hey, guys, just one quick question. We're seeing a trend where you had Minnesota signed three American players. You had Ottawa, Toronto, Montreal signed three Canadian players. Um, what are your senses? What is your sense on that? And, and uh, how do you feel about maybe doing a Canada-U.S. rivalry going on with those with those teams? I can jump in here. Um, I think, you know, during this free agency process, it's, it's really the only time that these players have any kind of say over where they're going to end up. Um, you know, I, I take my selection here for these three, um, just a coincidence that two of them are Boston. Uh, you know, it's, uh, and actually that Hillary also has played a pro career here before. So um, I think it's, it's a coincidence that these three um, are part of the city already because they would be people that I would go after regardless of the market that I'm in. Um, once the draft hits, you know, there's no, um, I'm not shying away from certain players because they're from different countries or um, I've played with different different teams. Uh, I, I want to get the best players on our team, the best players who can complement these three um, and the, the best players who are going to help us win a championship. And so, um, yeah, there are no, there are no borders. There are no, it's no Canada versus US, um, no priority in that regard. You know, you just want the best people and the best players in, in our locker room. Sorry, was that to me, Paul? Yeah, I do have one more question. Yes, go okay. ahead, please. Yep. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Um, something that Danielle just said sparked it for me. And Hillary, I'll direct this to you. Um, I'm curious for your thoughts. The other day, Gina Kingsbury mentioned that this league is going to change the way that we've seen the U.S. and Canada centralize their teams uh, in the lead up to events like the Olympics. And I'm curious for your thoughts at this point in the road, what you expect uh, this league to do to the international game, both for the U.S., but also for, for players from European, Asian, other teams. Yeah. No, I'm super glad you asked that question. I think, um, you know, we, we've never seen the best in the world in one place at, at this level. Uh, we see it in, in respective countries on the world stage. But uh, to be able to develop players from, from all over and to get a different style of play. Um, when we play with our countries, it, it's very unique to our country's style of play. You know, that's something that I learned when I lived up in Montreal. I was like, whoa, like these practices are different. And just so happened to the coach was speaking all French. And I was like, I have no idea what's going on. But, um, you know, it's 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 going to be a, a learning process. And it's going to be awesome because you're going to have the, the best players from Europe. You're going to have the best players from North America, you know, Asia, you, you name it. Um, everyone's going to come here. This is going to be the hot ticket. It's going to be the destination of, of places to play. And and that's something, you know, when we were going about this process that we wanted to make sure that, you know, everyone who was capable of playing in this could. Um, and and I'm I think that's why I'm like so excited. I'm, I'm giddy about it just from like a fan's perspective is you've never seen the, the hockey minds meet uh, from different countries on the women's side. We see it day in and day out on the NHL side and the men's side. But uh, it, the, we're just scratching the surface here of, of where we can take the game and, and development and, and whatnot. So that's what's really exciting. And then even one follow up after that, um, I think we've even talked about this in the past where right now the U.S. roster, even Canada's roster, have just very similar players year after year. And I'm curious, um, even thinking about soccer, how, how their league has resulted in a national team turnover. Uh, do you expect at some point that that will happen in USA hockey as well? Um, I think so. What we're going to see, I, I think, is, um, you know, a, a, an awesome like a super strong pipeline. Uh, of development and then uh, players careers potentially going longer because now we have more funding more resources more programming at this level um, and you know th those roster spots are it it's only going to deepen the talent pool right and so those roster spots are really really going to be more competitive than they have ever been before because now once you've graduated college you have more touch points and maybe you know your game wasn't developed enough to make that uh jump so to speak because the national team at the only time was the best hockey and the olympics is something that we covet super super uh super high up there so um you know it'll also give players time to develop and really grow into their game um you know i think it's a it's sort of tragic if you're not on the national team and you're done with college you have no place to play and you have to retire and go into whatever other facet um, you want to. So I think it's it's exciting because you're going to see, um, you know, 
players really come into their prime when they haven't never had the chance to before. And I think that's, you know, from a development standpoint and just the whole landscape of women's hockey at, at the highest level, that's what we all want. Thank you. And thank you, Paul, for humoring my follow-ups. No problem. Thank you. And uh, continue to see hands. So, Carissa, you can follow up as well, please. Thanks, Paul. Uh, just, yeah, just one quick follow-up that Alex's question kind of made me think of this from a fan perspective. Um, you know, one thing that's always been missing from women's hockey is sort of that, you know, chatter on talk radio about who's good at what and, you know, um, draft, you know, talking about the draft and talking about possible trades and stuff like that. And um, that's something that I think we're going to see for the first time um, ever, really. So how important is that for the growth of the sport, um, that excitement? Um, and, and I'm sure, you know, from the athlete's perspective, you know, having people care about it and talking about it on talk radio, maybe sometimes that will be difficult too, um, you know. Uh, but yeah, could you talk a little bit about how, how important that is? Yeah, I think the publicity and the visibility of it's huge. Um, you know, fans want to be a part of it. They want to know why, you know, what's going on in a the draft. They want to be able to root for players um, who maybe aren't yet with an organization, but they know are drafted to an organization. Um, and the the process, I think, is almost equally as exciting as, you know, what the actual product is. So um, as a fan, you know, they, there's there will be an excitement, a different excitement that women's hockey's never seen because of these discussions, because, you know, we can already see it on Twitter or um, X, apologize. Um, and, uh, you know, all over social media, because people want to know, like, they're trying to make assumptions and guess, um, you know, where people are going to be drafted and what our GM's thinking and who's going to play with who. And that is such important chatter um, to create an excitement around this game. And the men's side and and other professional sports and leagues have have that, and that's what we're missing. And and um, this league's providing that opportunity. New question from Gail, please. Hi, this is Gail from uh, Nesson.com. I had a question for the ladies, Hillary, um, Megan, and Aaron. Danielle, you can actually pipe in too. But being in Boston, the city is so passionate about its sports, and you hear it like when the Bruins aren't playing well, when the Patriots aren't playing well, the Red Sox, how are you going to, like, you're generating all this excitement, but you are, as Hillary said, in title town, and you have those um, negative things that come with the positive. So how do you decipher between that and push forward and keep going? Megan, no do you doubt. want to go first? Sure. I was going to say, no doubt that this fan base will definitely be holding us accountable, but I think that's only going to fuel us as a franchise. I mean, we're huge competitors and, and we want to win. And that's part of the reason that we chose to come to Boston is because we know of the history that it's one of the greatest sports towns in the world. And uh, so we couldn't be more excited to compete. And I think uh, a big thing about this fan base is they're going to be passionate. And uh, that's a fan base that I want to play for. Um, I know I'm sure Hillary and Aaron would love to, too. So. I think we're super excited to, to get into that. Hillary, Aaron, your thoughts on the question? Yeah, I, I would just quote Billie Jean King and say pressure is a privilege. You know, it's uh, it comes with the territory and, um, you know, it's something that uh, each one of us on this call and, you know, the, our, our um, future teammates aren't going to be new to. Um, so that's what's exciting. That's why we sign up to play hockey drop the puck it's always a 50 50 opportunity and uh, you know what the responsibility is and you know where you're playing and you want to make sure that you put your best foot forward every time we hop on the ice to to put put our our team in a successful position to win and uh, we want to win and that's why we're coming to boston we want to bring championships and titles to boston and we want to be a part of that legacy and that history yeah like both of them just said i think it's it's a good problem to have um over passionate fans are definitely ones that you would take over not enough fan support and i think that this is definitely a great city and um having all of the college uh, colleges in boston you have so many different fans already and i think this gives them a uniform professional team to support and i think you're going to see a lot of passionate fans and supportive fans that are going to follow a lot of people's careers um, out of college into the professional world so it's really exciting and um, i hope that we can give them the product final word danielle anything to add to that question as we wrap no i think the three of them nailed that